The Art of the Pivot is brought to you by Signavio. Hello there and welcome to another Art of the Pivot. We are joined today by Lisa Davis, Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Blue Shield of California, a nonprofit independent member of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association with four and a half million members, 7,500 employees and annual revenues of more than $20 billion. As CIO, Lisa is tasked with driving digital transformation and enterprise-wide modernization. In her work, she strives to align the visions of IT and business. And Lisa joined Blue Shield from Intel, where she also led major global transformation initiatives as a vice president and general manager in Intel's largest business unit, Data Center Group. Lisa, welcome. Where do we find you? Good afternoon, Mark. You find me in Sacramento area, Northern California. Well, so lovely. I'm sure the weather is looking quite glorious as we head towards summer. So um, let's get into the business of the day. Blue Shield of California, one of the larger Blue Shield organizations in the country. And you operate in California, the most popular state where healthcare is a key issue, especially at the moment. So maybe we could start by talking about the mission of your organization, given that's the situation uh, where you actually operate. Certainly. Blue Shield of California is an 82-year-old nonprofit health insurer. Our mission is to create a healthcare system that is worthy of our family and friends and sustainably affordable. And we have a goal to digitally disrupt healthcare by improving that member and provider experience and ultimately improve health outcomes. So we provide health, dental, vision, Medicaid, and Medicare healthcare service plans for, as you mentioned, four and a half million members across California. And I'm also proudly on the board of our Blue Shield of California Foundation, where over the past two decades, Blue Shield has, has contributed more than $500 million to the foundation to fund nonprofit organizations that strengthen the health safety net and address and prevent um, domestic violence. Wow. A lot of very positive work going on there. And of course, health outcomes, my goodness, people have talked about virtually little else for the last year. Uh, but I understand that you've got a, a major plan, which you look at as a way of designing uh, a transformation of healthcare as we know it. And it's called Health Reimagined, I believe. Sounds pretty ambitious. Can you tell us more? Yeah, I would love to. You know, one of the lessons from this pandemic is certainly uh, healthcare and the digital transformation required in healthcare has really been thrust to the forefront, um, which was very much needed. And we know that, and we know Blue Shield of California, that 20% of your health is a result of your genetics, which means 80% is determined by your environment and how you live. So we unveiled Health Reimagined almost a year ago, which is our innovative plan to transform the healthcare system in California and across the country. And our approach really involves three priorities. First, it's about holistic health. We're addressing the key drivers of health, social, environmental, clinical, genetic and behavioral factors and connecting members, which are our customers, to essential community services. One of the accomplishments we've had in that area is we've been conducting small scale pilots to really leverage the social determinants of health data to drive effective, targeted and personalized insights for members. In these pilots, we've been leveraging advanced data analytics to create for the first time a cloud enabled data first platform utilizing AI and machine learning. Another pillar of our strategy is around personalized care. So our care model is data-driven, it's evidence-based, and most importantly, it's patient-centered. It's designed to enable and reward physicians and hospitals for better outcomes, or what is known as value-based care, as well as to create that retail-like experience. And certainly our members, our patients today, are demanding that same type of experience that they're receiving from many other sectors. And finally, the last pillar is about high-tech and high-touch support. So we're deploying te technology to support care that's safe and effective, 
by and also removing inefficiencies. So imagine a world where patient, provider, and the payer have access to the same data. We have transparency of that data. So we have data interoperability, data sharing, starting with that electronic personal health record. And therefore working together and sharing that information against those three pillars I just outlined, we improve health outcomes. And most importantly, we have a better provider experience and we have a better member experience. That is, in a nutshell is what our health reimagined strategy is. Wow, it sounds very comprehensive. And of course, there's lots of stakeholders in that reimagination, but one of them, probably the most important, is, is the patient. In other words, us, right? We're people. Uh, but we, you might be able to gather the best data in the world and all of it, but do humans really make the most rational decisions? We see a donut, we want to eat it. You know, it, we, we talk about the best outcomes, but a lot is dependent on us as humans doing the right thing at the right time. Is there a way that we can convince people to be healthier? It's a great question. You know, our, our, our health re reimagined strategy really centers around this shared decision-making model. And the data actually shows that when people are engaged and involved in their healthcare decisions, we actually see better health outcomes. So that has been proven out, and we have proven that out again through many of the pilots and, and um, activities that we've been engaged with over the year. It, you know, it's amazing in this data revolution that we're in, we all of us as consumers have data at the tips of our fingers. We go on our computers, right. we do a Google search, we're searching what we think our symptoms are, what may happen, and it's really bringing that collective data together. But I wanna emphasize that it starts with the sharing of that personal electronic health record. We're in a system today, uh, an ecosystem where I go or you go to different doctors and that information isn't being shared amongst those doctors. So if I have in front of me and we're leveraging through what we call an experience cube and our health reimagined strategy, the ability to transparently share this information with the providers in my network, with maybe a community health advocate that helps me make those decisions, we believe that we can improve those health comes and ultimately transform the experience that our providers and members are having. You mentioned doing searches on Google. I often consult Dr. Google. And it just never ends happily. <laughs> I don't like what I find there at all. Um, or WebMD you, you talk, or many of the other platforms yes, that, that are there, out there. That can be sometimes a bit more sensible. Um, but I'm fascinated by this because you're right. We, we have a feast of data at our fingertips. And what's interesting I found as a consumer really is, is almost you could call it the gamification of health. There's a few extra steps, just a, a little bit more movement. A anything that you can do to raise the awareness of our own activity uh, it seems to make a lot of sense. But surely you must hit legal problems when it comes to sharing uh, personal medical data across different touch points. Yeah, this is one of the biggest hurdles that we as a health ecosystem need to need to really address is how do we make data more accessible and more interoperable? You know, we have systems today that keep that data in proprietary systems. It makes it very difficult to share information to create this seamless member and provider experience that we're after. We really need to move to an open ecosystem to encourage, encourage data sharing and interoperability and to break down the barriers that have hindered our health ecosystem for years, decades and decades. Yeah. And I think the pandemic has really brought that to the forefront. If, if we take a uh, think back to over a year ago, two years ago, would we ever thought that telehealth would have presented the opportunities of improving that experience and actually the data showing improving outcomes. Um, yeah, telehealth yeah. would have never been at the forefront of our thinking. And the pandemic has really forced us to think and act differently in order to save lives during this pandemic, but also set the stage for the future of where the health ecosystem needs to move. 
and we won't stay too long on this, but it was fascinating to me how telehealth became a thing when prior to the pandemic, you know, regulation got in the way. It was rules and it was red tape. But then a pandemic turns up and all that's thrown out because this is an emergency. And now we've found a better way. Do you think we'll be able to hold on to that uh, after the pandemic? I absolutely think we can hold on to that. And there's no doubt that the regulation has to move with the technology and help us drive this digital transformation that is required in the health ecosystem. We're doing a lot of that in California, uh, working with the state, helping to improve legislation in terms of how we're thinking about data sharing and interoperability in the state of California. So I'm hoping the lessons that we've learned from the pandemic Um, the ecosystem, the partners in the ecosystem being ready to move forward, take our learnings that we've had over the last year and a half, and really a new direction um, and a new vision, a new strategy of us working together of how we're going to fix and transform healthcare. I love it. Now, of course, as CIO, uh, you have very clear responsibilities. And I'd love to know a little bit more about how you get your arms around a big new transformation project like this. So, you know, what are you evaluating? What are you prioritizing? And do you aim as high as possible uh, to give you kind of that, that really audacious goal? Or do you act in a very realistic fashion so you know you can deliver what you're talking about? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, we've all heard of BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. And certainly to transform the healthcare system, that's a big, hairy, audacious goal. And it requires a set of ecosystem of of like-minded partners of what we're going to do to transform the system. But at the same time, it's taking that BHAG or audacious goal And how do we drive to implementation? How do we chunk it out and learn as we talk about agile thinking and mindset, bring these new technology capabilities in terms of how we're doing the work, how we fail fast and iterate on the pilots that we're bringing into market, and how we drive an implementation plan over the next several years that ultimately brings a capability to market that transforms the member and provider experience. So we're doing both. But I will tell you, in order to be able to play that role as an IT organization, it required us to pivot the operating model of the of the IT organization from a traditional service provider role into being aligned and being a strategic partner with the business. That required us to create portfolio and product models that align to our core business functions and core business growth areas. It's building, it's putting data and analytics at the heart of our strategy, and it's pivoting to the cloud so that we become more agile and flexible in our ability to scale with the products that we want to bring to market. So it's requiring us from the IT side to pivot in the way we were thinking and engaging and working side by side with the company strategy and business priorities of how ultimately we bring these capabilities to market. You know, throughout time, healthcare has never been, not never, that's unfair, but it's not always been at the forefront of tech innovation. And here you are, a true innovator, Uh, having come out of Intel and you're working with the business that maybe doesn't always get where you're trying to go and vice versa. Any tips you can share with our audience about how to align two objectives that somehow uh, and occasionally feel like they're going in different ways, but find a way to, to bring them together? Any top tips? I think my top tips would be First, there needs to be an alignment at the at the board of directors and at the executive leadership as to what is the vision? What are our core values? Where do we want to go as a company? And our job in the IT organization, and certainly my job as a CIO, is to na- enable that vision with technology, data, and analytics at the core of our thinking. That requires really a two-sided effort. One, on IT, 
to speak in terms of the business, to build business acumen, to understand the challenges and problems that we're tackling as a company to help us pivot to transform healthcare. But it also requires the business to learn IT speak to learn Uh, to think about data as a strategic asset and put data at the center and our members and providers at the forefront of what we're trying to build and deliver. That will be what ultimately differentiates Blue Shield of California into the market and how we transform healthcare. That alignment and buy-in at the executive table and working together with your business partners laying out an implementation plan on that strategy to focus on execution. And by golly, we know that it's never technology that's the hard part. It's always the change management that really requires the most effort. And that's where our jobs as leaders is to inspire, to over communicate, is to continually show small wins and to build that momentum until we reach our end state. I love uh, what you said earlier about the fact that the IT team needs to learn the language of business. The business team needs to learn the language of IT. My question following on from that is who's got more work to do typically? (laughs) I think think there's enough work to go all the way around. (laughs) Um, You know, frankly, with a big transformation of this size and we we, you know, we don't want to underestimate, we know how complex this is. And it's not just going to be about the IT and the business uh, organizations at Blue Shield of California. In order to really do and to enable the vision that we have in transforming healthcare, it's going to require an ecosystem of like-minded partners. Um, it's going to it's going to require thinking of how we change our business models in going to market. How do we create a value network for our members and our providers, and ultimately what differentiates capabilities that we are bringing to market? So I, I think there's a, enough work to go more around. I'm not sure it's either IT or the business that has more work to do, but it's certainly that strategic partnership, engagement of lining, of bringing the best of what we do and know, the business having that clinical, medical, understanding our patients and providers, and IT bringing technology and data and thinking about how we enable that corporate strategy, marrying the two of those together. That was a very diplomatic answer. But it was a good one. Um, you know, you're, you're doing so much at the organization. And then this idea of effectively enterprise-wide modernization, while keeping the amount of business disruption to a minimum, that is not easy. So I'd love to know how you manage that. While you're making big changes, you're still running a huge organization. I hear analogies a lot like, you know, we're fixing the plane while we're flying it, or we're changing a wheel while we're driving down the highway. Is that what it feels like? And, And any tips on how to make that a reality? I think it does. I think that is what it feels like. I mean, in this age of disruption and how fast we move and the demands that our consumers have and expect of us from a technology standpoint, certainly the experience they have in one sector, they expect across all sectors. The experience they have with their technology at home, they expect to have that same technology experience in the workplace. So it's always a balance of operational excellence, which to me is day-to-day operations of our job as technologists. We keep our systems operating. We stabilize our environment. We operate at an excellence level in terms of audit, compliance, and controls. All the things that are required to keep the trains on the station. And at the same time, it requires us to invest and to innovate and to keep pace with where the market is so that ultimately we are bringing a differentiated capability into market for our members and providers. And that requires for me, certainly surrounding myself with a group of leaders aligned to our core values. All of us have a job to do. It's not a one person job. Um, Certainly the partnership with my business peers and leaders into the efforts that we continue to make. So it does require a balanced approach 
in terms of how you're operating day to day, but also how you're investing resources and time uh, into building the future. And, and I can't underestimate the need to transform the IT operating model into being able to allow us to do that. So having customer facing portfolio teams, thinking in terms of products versus projects, rationalizing our platforms so we get access to data easier and really prioritizing the work that you're doing so that we're focused on the right things for the right reasons, measuring our progress and driving to those outcomes that we've set together with our business partners. Fabulous, thank you. My goodness, our time is almost up. So my last question really is another one where I'm asking you to share some advice. You went from Intel to Blue Shield. You'd imagine those are hugely different cultures. Um, anything you would share about how you took the best from one to create the best in another? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, I spent the first 26 years of my career in Department of Defense, so I am very mission oriented and focused. Right. And the job that I had at Intel really uh, afforded me the opportunity to not only run a global business, but to really engage across all sectors from a digital transformation standpoint. And from that effort and that engagement, really understanding how much, how much impact, how much leadership was needed in the healthcare sector. And when I saw what Blue Shield was doing and their mission focus, it really, um, really uh, connected me to my core values and put forth and brought my leadership and experience to engage and to really drive change in the healthcare sector. So the learnings, you know, Intel is an incredible company um, and I'm so grateful for my experience at Intel. They are the, one, the, the most innovative and they build technology that changes the world. Taking those learnings, applying those learnings from my time in government and academia and in high and bringing those learnings and wisdom to how I engage as a leader in healthcare in the healthcare sector is what helps make me ultimately a better leader and I would encourage those to seek after those opportunities that continue to grow you as a leader and to apply those learnings from your other experiences to how you're doing and executing in the job you have today. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Lisa Davis, we really appreciate your time, your stories, and of course, your insight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. The Art of the Pivot is brought to you by Signavio.